All right, so starting into chapter two. Uh, chapter two is going to be all about polynomials and the equations and what we can all do with them. Um, a lot of it's going to focus in on quadratics especially, but we're going to hit a little bit of everything with polynomials. Starting with complex numbers. Complex numbers is one of my favorite lessons to do because all of math you're told you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. And now today, this lesson, we come in and we go, hey, here's the loophole, here's how you can do it. So, square root of 49. Again, you're told you cannot do this uh, square root of a negative. It doesn't come out well. Well, the loophole is, is that it just doesn't come out to be a real number. It comes out to be a complex or an imaginary number. So, square root of 49 would be 7, and the square root of the negative makes it an i. So, 7i is what we're going to get out of this. So, i is the square root of negative 1. i squared, then, would just be negative 1. So, if we simplify this, we have to distribute this negative on. So, it's not just going to go to 25. It's going to be 25i squared. The i squared, of course we know is negative one, so we can cross that out and that's gonna change the sign. Because remember, this is technically gonna be a negative one, so that negative one times 25 makes it a negative 25. So we're really just subbing that out and replacing it. So what we're dealing with are complex numbers. Complex number is gonna be the set of all numbers in the form of A plus BI. A is the real part. A and B will also be real numbers, but A is the real part, BI then is the imaginary part. So BI alone is a pure imaginary number. So you don't really realize this, but what we were dealing with before with like say even negative 25, that's a pure real number. We don't worry about calling it that, we just know, that, oh yeah, it's a real number, that's the number we're used to working with. We really don't think about it, but BI then is then a pure imaginary. So complex numbers, some examples here. So here. We have a real part of negative four, we have an imaginary part of six i. Over here now, well, two i really could be written as zero plus two i, there's just nothing for a real part. So all we'd have is just that pure imaginary part. Same thing over here, if we have three, this is a pure real number, we could still write this as three plus zero i, it's just there's nothing of an imaginary part with it. So as far as equality goes with complex numbers, two complex numbers are equal, if we're dealing with a plus bi and c plus di here, as long as the real part, the a and c are congruent or are equal, and bi and di, the imaginary part, are equal. So b and d have to be the same. So the real part have to be the same and the imaginary parts have to be the same in order for it to be a equal complex number. Now, when it comes to adding and subtracting complex numbers, we're gonna combine like terms just like we would with polynomials. So we put our x's together, we put our x squared together, we put our constants together, that sort of a thing. So here we're going to put the real parts together, we're going to put the imaginary parts together. So 5 and 7, when we add them together, we get 12. Negative 11i and 4i would be minus 7i. And that's it. So if we subtract them, same thing, although here I would distribute this negative in, so the negative to both of those, so that we can just do negative 5 and positive 11, which makes 6, and positive i and positive 6, which makes a plus 7i. So just as with polynomials, when we multiply, we have to do FOIL, or as I grew up learning, it was called the claw. Um, now, if we have a monomial, so just a single part, so if just the imaginary or just the real part, all we gotta do is distribute that in, just like we would if it was a 4x there instead of a 4x plus 2, for example. We would just distribute it in if it's a single term there. So 4i and 3 would make 12i, and 4i and negative 5 would make a minus 20i squared. And that i squared, again, is going to change the sign so that's a plus. And when we write this, we always write the real part first, and then the imaginary. That's the proper form of a complex number. But when we are um, two binomials, so two complete complex numbers here, we're going to have to FOIL this. So 7 and negative 2 would make negative 14. 
7 and negative 5i would be minus 35i. Negative 3i and negative 2 would make a plus 6i. And negative 3i and minus 5i would be a plus 15i squared, which again we'll flip the sign. So negative 15 and negative 14 can go together to be 29. Negative 35i and 6i would be a minus uh, 29i. Right. Now, just like with um, with polynomials, we can get a conjugate of the complex number. So if it's a plus bi, it changes to a minus bi would be its conjugate. Same thing going the other way. If it's a minus bi, the conjugate would be a plus bi. Um, and just like with square roots, we can't divide by an imaginary number. Um, you can try, but it's not going to end out well. Because again, we have an imaginary part and that adds a whole new dimension to it. So to get rid of, what we do is we use that conjugate to get rid of it in the denominator. So that it's just in the numerator. So if we go to something like this, so we can't have that i in the bottom, so we're going to take it times the conjugate of the bottom, so 2 plus 5i. Same thing on top, 2 plus 5i. So the top one we, just, we have to foil, so 7 and 2 would make 14. 7 and 5i would be plus 35i. 4i and 2 would be plus 8i. And 4i and 5i would be plus 20i squared. We're going to deal with that in just a moment. The bottom, because they're conjugates, the middles are going to cancel. So it's just 2 and 2, which would make 4. Negative 5i and positive 5i would be a minus 25i squared. So i squared, remember we cancel that and we change the sign. So we cancel this, change the sign. And we put things together. 14 and negative 20 would be a negative 6. 35 and 18 would make plus 43i. The bottom 4 and 25 would make 29. So as far as square roots go, keep in mind that if we have the square root of a negative, we can rewrite it as i square root of the positive that are neat there. So, when working with negative square roots, pull that negative out to make it i square root first when you're doing these. So, these we're going to rewrite as i square root of 25 times i square root of 4. Now, square root of 25 would be 5i, square root of 4 would be 2i, and so when we multiply these, we're going to get 10i squared, which we're going to switch it to be a negative 10 for our solution. Now, just like with polynomials, if we subtract, we have to have that same square root uh, in order to subtract them. So we may have to do some manipulation here to make that work. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this i square root of 18 minus i square root of eight. So 18 I could break down to nine and two which goes to 3 and 3. 8 can go to 2 and 4, which goes to 2 and 2. So my exit buddies, I can pull a 3 out. I can pull a 2 out. So what I'm going to have here is this. So 3i square root, we still have a 2 left over, minus 2i square root, we still have a 2 left over. So now they're the same. So there are 3i square root of 2, 2i square root of 2. So the i square root of 2 all has to be the same in order to do it. If this was just 3 square roots of 2 and this one was our 2i square root of 2, we wouldn't be able to do it. The i square root of 2, so that whole thing has to be the same in order to subtract the coefficients in front. So we're the same here, so we'd end up with an i square root of 2 for our final answer. Now, 
quadratic formula works just the same if we have a negative square root. So before, when we did the determinant, we knew that, hey, if we got a negative underneath here, there was zero real solutions. So keep that in mind. It's zero real solutions. There's going to be two complex instead. So if we do this one here, we're going to have, and I'm going to slide this up. So x equals plus or minus negative b. This is going to be our b. This is going to be our a. This is going to be our c. So negative b would be a negative of a negative 2, which would be 2 plus or minus. Started getting ahead of myself with the plus or minus, and I apologize. Square root of b squared. So negative 2 squared would be 4 minus 4 times our a, which is 3, times c, which is 4. All over 2 times a, so 2 times 3. So x would equal... 2 plus or minus the square root. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 3 is 48. And 4 minus 48 would leave us with a negative 44 underneath there over 6. So again, negative under the square root. We know there's not going to be too real, but we're going to get too imaginary instead, or too complex, I should say, instead. So we're going to rewrite this as 2 plus or minus i square root of 44 over 6. 44, though, we could break down to 4 and 11, which goes to 2 and 2. So again, we have our two exit buddies. So we can pull a 2 in front. So 2 plus or minus 2i square root of 11, because 11 is left over, over 6. So the 6 can be reduced by 2 to a 3. This would go to 1. That's 2 a 1. So we'd end with 1 plus or minus i square root of 11 over 3. And those would be our two imaginary numbers. We would take 1 plus i squared of 11 divided by 3 and 1 minus i squared of 11 over 3. And that's how we would get our two complex numbers. So that is it for this lesson. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, until next time, we'll talk to you later.